Hello and welcome to Genealogy Quick Start. I am Shamel Jordan, your host. Have you ever seen a whole bunch of dates on a document and you're like, what's up? Which date am I putting in my genealogy software for this? What, what am I doing here? Why are all these dates here? Well, guess what? Your buddies, Jim and Michael are going to handle, take care of you with that today with their amazing new quick start, the dating game record style. And our extra special guest is here to talk about something that I've wanted to know forever. I have heard my grandfather talk about the CCC camp and building the roads here in South Jersey and I've seen pictures of huge numbers of men in CC camps, and I've just never known what to do, where to go. And so that's why we have our special guest here today, um, certified genealogist and certified genealogical lecturer, Patricia Walls Stam. So without further ado, I'm going to bring my buddies on here. Oh, and guess what? Those of you who are here, you know what to do. Let us know where you are. Let us know your genealogy group because there might be some genealogy souls here that need saving. So let me bring them out. My buddies, columnist and editor, Jim Beidler. Hello, Jim. And genealogy tip of the day, Michael John Neal. You're not laughing at us. What's going on in that house? Um. I, I was laughing at you, but that's okay. The cats are well behaved, so I can't blame them today for their for their. You can antics. always blame the cats. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> so have yeah, you guys see. ever? Oh God, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, we'll see how that all works out. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you guys ever had any CC camp stories in your family, or some just some interesting occupations that? you um find um i i am i am a purebred pennsylvania german farmer stacked on top of pennsylvania german farmer stacked on top of pennsylvania german farmer <laughs> i mean i think i think maybe if you go way back i had a cooper and uh, uh a uh, yeah that's about that's about as exotic as my lineage gets Farmer, Other farmer, than farmer, not being Pennsylvania <laughs> German, mine are pretty much the same. But I, I do have a few colorful characters. Uh, I have a Cooper and a Tavern Keeper and a, a few other people we may discuss one day when we have more than just a couple seconds. All right. So I want to go ahead and just jump in here because your, your quick start is simple, but I think it's going to be quite impactful because there is so much there when it comes to dates like in your genealogy software, you got to have a date, right? You got to put something in. But before we do that, let's say hello. We have some folks here today. Let's see who we have. Of course, we have Kathy Wiseman. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. Oh, we have Anita. How are you, Anita? From You said the, the PA Poconos. Love those Poconos. I got to come up and visit you. Oh, Kathy says, yes, I'm in Ohio. The great genealogy state of Ohio. And we have the, the great state of Pennsylvania here, the Genealogical Society of Pennsylvania. Woohoo! And we have Jean here. Hi, Jean from Collegeville, PA, AAGG in Pennsylvania, AA Alts, um, Family Quest. And you have a new one here. You joined another AUGS chapter, Gene, and South Carolina Historical Society. I might join South Carolina with you. I got to check out what the benefits are. Thank you. Hello, Val from Hatboro, PA. And of course, GSP, our wonderful president. Say hello to the president. And Katie's here from Philly as well. This is kind of a Philly crowd. We know that there are other yeah. people there. Definitely let us know you're there and where you are. I know there's some Chicago ladies here. Hello, ladies. I know you don't put the things in the chat, but it's always nice to have you here. All right. We are now ready for this wonderful quick start. And you guys are calling it the dating game record style. So you guys want to maybe give a kind of intro to what this is going to be all about? Well, I mean, you diagnosed it a little bit in your in your intro 
uh, we tend to simplify the questions in genealogy a lot of times. Oh, what is what is the date of the document? Uh, and really, a lot of times, maybe what we should be the, the real question we should be asking is what dates plural are found in a particular document. All right, Michael, you have anything to add? That's, that's a very good point. The only thing I would add is, in addition to looking at your records on your people, look at other records on other people to get a perspective for you know, how close those dates are, how far apart they are, what's typical, what's atypical. Because if you've just looked at a very few, you don't know if your people are normal or abnormal. <laughs> Um, and that, that's, a well, loaded, I know. That, that's a loaded statement right there. But <laughs> We know about yours, Michael. Well, that, that's <laughs> true. But to, to circle around to the actual point, you know, is, is that gap of four weeks typical or is it atypical? And if it's atypical, is there something further I should be researching based on that? Um, yep. All joking aside, that's kind of one of the things we're looking at with these dates uh, in these kinds of records, besides the date of the event, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in cases where where you you have uh, a wide range in dates in the in the document, a lot of times some that's recorded much later after it's written, then then you wonder, you know, how accurate that uh, that original is, especially if it's been recopied in some way. My cousin Floyd almost had a heart attack one day at the Florida State Library when there was a missing date, the date that they got married. He thought we were all bastards. So, yeah, we just looked down a couple lines and then they were repeated and they had the date for when they actually. Uh, okay. Okay. So it was just a false start. Though. I could feel the heat coming from the microfilm machine next to me. <laughs> that all Floyd, right. he was jumping to conclusions. So he was, he was. I knew I, I, I had faith in Mama and Papa. He was, he had some concerns. So. <laughs> all right, let's get started with this wonderful quick start: the dating game record style. So yeah, I, I I failed in my homework to uh, come up with to be able to hum the old dating game. <laughs> I can't remember the, the tune either. I can't. I'm I'm kind of glad that didn't happen. So <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 probably and probably everyone in Quick Start Land feels the same way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Step one: you have the document. You want to transcribe the document. Do you guys have any tips on transcribing? Because you know I like transcribing actually, but it's kind of a lot of work. Well, try to render the document as accurately and faithfully as you can. Don't make any corrections. Don't make any modifications. If you've, if there's some things you want to annotate because they look weird or whatever, do that in brackets, preferably after your actual transcription, just to make it clear what is the actual document and what is any thoughts that you might, um, you might have. Um, and if there's abbreviations in the document, abbreviate it when you transcribe it. If you want to explain it more fully elsewhere, then go ahead and do that. And if you want to be old school cool, you put CQ with that or stat, you know, that, that will uh, say, well, that's, that's correct as written. So. Oh, that's what that just, means. Just a, just a little bit of printer humor there, but. I did not know that. So I was always told, read the document through first and then um, go back through and then do the transcription. And in later years, I've gotten lazy and um, I don't type. I use voice typing in Google Docs. I read my document and then I go back and I make edits. So something that, that can speed it up for you. <laughs> All right, so we're transcribing those documents. Let's move on to step two which is to find all the dates in a document. Um, well, that's not too hard. You guys want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. And I don't know if you want to want to do my sure. examples. Sure. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, the first one that I sent over uh, are infant baptismal records and just about in all cases, infant baptism records are going to have both a um, uh, 
a baptismal date or, or for a birth date and a baptismal date. Uh, and here, here we have the wonderful grid of the I early burn. This. Yeah, the early burn Reformed Church uh, records, baptismal records from 1756. Uh, other parts of this book are not in grid form; they are in narrative form, which is even more of a, a bugger to try to figure out. Uh, but it, then, if we um, if we zero Can in on just the top, on the top oh. entry, uh, from left to right, you have the parents in German, the Eltern, Kinder, the child. Next column is um, the baptismal sponsors. And then finally, the dates that we're that we're looking looking for, um, and and this this one this one actually is is fairly uh, vanilla. Uh, it has a birth date of the sixth of August, seventeen fifty six, and then baptized the fifteenth of August, seventeen fifty six. Uh, and for this being the the backwoods of Pennsylvania at the time. Uh, a nine-day delay in baptism is is pr is pretty no no pretty much no big deal. Uh, I mean, in Germany at the time, most of the time they they'd be baptizing the day or the day after. Oh wow! Uh, wow. Of birth, yeah, yeah. But in the country in the countryside of America, and I I tried and failed to to find the example I really wanted, where where you had to had to do some calendar math. Want to f figure out the birth date because the uh, it, it listed a, a baptismal date and then the birth date was four weeks ago last Tuesday. <laughs> so then you got to you got to break out your perpetual calendar and find out for that year when the baptismal date in question was, and then count <laughs> count back the the weeks and the days of the week. So it's not always straightforward, is what I'm trying to say. No and sometimes you might find they, they reference a feast day or a holiday instead of the actual yeah. the actual date. And uh, in earlier records, in some locations, they won't even list the birth date. They'll list, list the baptismal date because in the eyes of the church, that's the date that really matters. Um, is yeah. the, the christening. But that's going to vary from when, you know, some pastors, it's their own discretion what, what dates they include. Yeah. But yeah, the point's well taken is that it technically is not a birth record. It's a baptismal record that often does have either the birth date or is suggestive of when the uh, the birth date was. Yeah. All right. So we're finding all the dates in the documents, pulling them mm -hmm. all out. And mm -hmm. um, we're moving on to step three is to do kind of what you're doing right now is to analyze the dates how far apart they are how one thing typical. i would go ahead one thing i would add to the, the record that jim had especially if they don't list the birth date make very clear when you're entering that in your date, database software if it's a baptismal date you indicate baptism i know it may be close to the date of birth but it's not the birth date so make certain you're putting um, you're tagging that as a baptismal date not the birth date or any other date right because yes. there is a field for that there's a right, separate exactly, you don't have exactly. to put it under birthday um Okay, so we are <clears throat> analyzing that date, and then we are step four is to check on gaps. Are there any other like reasons why there might be gaps for certain records? How many do you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on. We didn't use it as an example because we already had enough illustrations, but. My grandmother was a member of a church that practiced infant baptism, and she was baptized when she was five years old. And she had told me that, and I just thought she was wrong. But when I went and looked, she, uh, she was five years old when she was baptized with two of her younger siblings. Why that happened, I don't know. There was a pastor there. There was an opportunity for her to be baptized. I think in that case, there was just some probably disgruntled with some preacher or something and they waited until the new one got there. I'm not really, I'm not really <laughs> certain, but that can, um, that can happen. Um, we could pull one of my il illustrate the other illustration I sent or one of Jim's, whichever you think may be more appropriate. Um, we can look at yours. Let's go there and then we'll go back to Jim's. You guys are uh, testing me today. <laughs> well, that's, that's the whole point. This is a, a deed um in 
Bourbon County, Kentucky, and there are quite a few dates in the <coughs> excuse me in this document. There's the date the D was actually written, which was the uh, 12th of March, 1801, between James Susanna uh, Tinsley and Mr. Bounty. Uh, that's the first date that is listed in the document, the date it was written. But there are more dates because there's a lot of especially in this time period in this location there's a process to writing the deed proving the deed recording the deed so that's the first date the date they signed it but if you pull up the next one there's more dates um, this was that and this was seven years later so there's a gap but it was seven years later when Susanna Tinsley acknowledged her relinquishment of dower um, to that to that real estate. Now she had to go in front of a justice, two justices of the peace, to do that. So it's a six-year gap. That's quite a gap. Um, why it's that long, I don't know. Typically, that's it's not quite that long. A month or two at most. There might have been some reason. I don't know. Maybe she refused to sign it. I, I don't know. Maybe she was ill. I, I really don't know. But there's a significant gap there. That's the biggest gap is when she relinquishes her dower. You know, was Can she you Ill? explain what a dower is and what as it his, means to relinquish? As, his, um, as James's wife, Susanna had a, she couldn't sell the property herself because we can't have a woman doing that in 1801. That's just not right. But as his, and that's a joke, people, that is a joke. But um, as his wife, she had an interest in that property. He couldn't just sell it. And for him to sell it, for the deed to be legal, she had to acknowledge she's giving up her right to inherit that if he were to die. Um, and so that's what she's doing. Is she's She knows he's selling it. She knows she will never get it once it's been, once it's been sold. Um, Technically, the widow had what the wife had the right to refuse that. Of course, if she refuses it, her husband's going to immediately know. So, you know, how often that really happened is, is probably pretty minimal. But that's um, that's what's going on there with her relinquishment. Then there were some other dates in that. If you, um, I'm going to talk while you try to pull up the rest of it. There was a date where this was where she's giving up her acknowledging the relinquishment of her dower. In the next one, James, um, let's see, the witnesses, um, 1801, this was done in open court. Bourbon County, you see there, October court, 1801. There's no date, but it was just the October term of the court. The deed, the witnesses went and um, in front of the clerk said, we witnessed this deed from Tinsley to Bounty. And so that's the red there where Hughes and um, Rutherford are saying, yeah, we saw him, him and his wife sign that document. And then in November of 1808, I think that's supposed to be 1806, it was acknowledged by James himself in front of, you see there that there's that little blue on the right hand corner, um, clerk of Bourbon County Court. That's what that's standing for. James went in front of the court oh. and acknowledged that he, um, actually did that document so that in this case that's part of why the gap at least for james james had to go to court to mm -hmm. acknowledge that and if you keep in mind the time period and place where this took where this happened court met four times a year most likely right. so if he didn't go during the one term of the court they'd have to wait and it might have taken a while before james got himself to court <laughs> to acknowledge that document and then there's also the date the document was Record. I believe in this case they're saying that the recording date was the same as the date that he acknowledged it because he is in court and the clerk at that point in time is making the record copy of the of the deed. But there's a lot of different dates in this um, in this one uh, land record. The neat thing is I've got an estimate. If I didn't know when Susanna died, she's relinquishing her dower on that second slide, the date I've forgotten. But that would indicate to me she was alive as of that date. And we know that uh, Jimmy Tinsley there was alive on the date that he acknowledged it in open court. <laughs> yeah. So those dates are helpful because, you know, if they're doing these acts beyond the signing of the deed, they're alive at those points in time. And sometimes those dates are really are helpful depending upon what's going on in that person's life. Yeah, you have you have that all diagnosed cor correctly, Michael. Uh, but there, there are times also where the delay, like in the case of a, a deed, may mean that there that somebody's recording it when an, a subsequent 
uh, land, tra land transaction has taken place. Because because I've, I've seen somewhere it's 100, 150 years after the fact that a, a deed finally gets recorded. And of course, then, you know, you know, oh, geez, this is not the current. <coughs> this is not the current land. There may be a whole chain waiting for you there. And hopefully they hopefully if it's a case like that, they then recorded them all at the at the same time. So you Man, can just right. go through the same book. Right. Many of those, what happened is somebody went to do a title search or to get title insurance or a whatever chain of title. And they go back and like, oh, oopsies, um, there's all these things that aren't recorded. And so they, yeah, like you say, they have to go record them all at once to clean up the title before that final deed can be can be recorded. Yeah. Oh, oh you mean these 10, 10 deeds that prior property <laughs> owners gave me? Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do something about that. I was using those for a grocery list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our general store list. We'll put, we'll yeah. put back a little more appropriate. There. So you guys have some more um, documents yeah, yeah. to share. Let's show those. Yeah. Show the marriage license that I, I uh, pulled up from Western Pennsylvania. All right. Let's go back to the marriage license. Give me a second to get there. I hope I go the right way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm having a real problem with these slides. Hold on a second. We, we, we going to see Pat's whole presentation here? <laughs> yes, I know. This is awful. I don't know why it keeps. Um... So what's this document that we're going to look at? The marriage license. It, it should be right after the baptism. So Okay. I think that is it a bond or an actual it's a bond or an actual license it's an actual license yeah oh, okay. yeah it's it's an application and then and then has a duplicate at the bottom returned and it has a total of three three dates so i think i got it guys Here okay <laughs> rub, rub, rub the lamp <laughs> Is trying to come. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So this is from Beaver County, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'll admit this is just one I, I just randomly pulled out. Uh, but on the on the document, we have the date of the application, the date of the return of the duplicate from the person performing the marriage and the date of the actual marriage. You know, so, you know, Greenhorns are going to, you know, look at this very, not do the transcription step like we're recommending. And they're going to put down the marriage date as 9th of August, yeah. instead of 11 August. So, uh, and then these, this, these also interested me because Beaver was uh, giving more information than a lot of counties in Pennsylvania did, including um, actual, uh, uh, birth dates of these people. This is or, fantastic. Or I love yeah. this. Of course, none yeah. of my ancestors have this, but yeah. this is they have these in North Carolina too. North Carolina yeah. has a lot like this. Oh my gosh, all the way down to the the months and the day. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I love this in 1850s. This is amazing. Yeah, so and then this is all of the dates in your software, or do you maybe put in the marriage date and then include these other dates within the that you might event? you might just put them as as notes. Yeah, okay. you just might want to put them as notes, or and certainly if you if you transcribe all the data from the document, you'll have all the dates that way. Okay, most definitely. And Michael, you have a document or two. Did you have another document? No, that no, was I think it. That was it. That okay. was it. But if you're if you're in a state where they did marriage bonds, like in a lot of the South, you know, marriage bonds were a tradition up until around the time of the Civil War and some places later. But marriage bonds are similar to a license. There's that date they get the bond, which is similar to the date they get the license. Yes. That's not the date they got married. That's the date they went and, and got the bond. And just like with Jim's, then there's a marriage date. And then there may be a date that the document was returned and filed at the at the courthouse. And keep in mind, just because they got a license, they may never have gotten married. You want to make sure you see a return in there. <laughs> as well because most of them that got a license or filed for bonds did get married but there's every so often things it happen happens between the date of the after the date of the license and before the marriage and it ends up not um not taking place 
They might have went on Jerry Springer and found out you are not the father. All right. And so step five is then to document and repeat. So we did this with a marriage record, which has tons. We did this with a deed. Are there other records that, you know, have a lot of records that we might want to analyze those dates? There are so many <laughs> records with different dates that we're get, we're going to do more on this exactly. in two weeks. So. All right. So let's see. Did you guys have any questions from them? Let's see. Kathy says, what, Kathy? I found that, a man. That just, who, that just sounds oh, like plain old bigamy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? If it's if you're sure it's the same man, that sounds like bigamy. And in, in certain places, especially earlier time periods, it was not uncommon for a couple to not get divorced and go to a couple counties away where nobody knew them and get married again. Anita you know? said maybe they argued about it for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy says that there there's so many baptisms all, all the children on the same day is that common I, I, have you guys I, I, seen that before I would, oh, I've definitely seen it before I don't know if I want to call it common uh, but uh, you know like Michael was describing you know there there could be a, a dispute situation uh, where, where, you know, they're estranged from their church for a while, uh, or it could be a backwoods situation where there is no pastor for, for a long while, uh, loads of different, uh, possibilities, uh, you know, for that. Kathy has one where she says, I've got a land transfer from the death of my two ex great grandfather that referred back to her husband's death 50 years earlier. That's yeah, that, nice. That's probably the dower situation. Yeah. That is really nice. All right. Let us look at these. Um, what? So Judy says sometimes the children were baptized on the day of a family member's funeral. I guess he was there and they did everything that needed to happen in that day. <laughs> Well, seriously, I have I have one where where um, uh, the mother died and uh, died in childbirth, and you know the the child then was baptized on the mother's day of the mother's funeral. Yeah. Well, on the other end of things, I've also had had uh, two of my great grandparents who were married the day of their first child's baptism. So. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully in that order, married and then baptized. <laughs> All right, let's look at the steps. Uh, can I get, I don't know how to do that. I know how to get, oops, sorry. I have to get rid of that comment. So we can see all these wonderful steps. So step one is to, for the dating game record style, transcribe the document, of course. Step two, find all the dates in the document. Step three, you want to analyze all those dates. Step four, are there any gaps? Step five, document and repeat. So thank you guys so much for that. And I, I'm going to get on these dates. Thank you. Thank See, you. Ya. See ya. All right, guys, let's get ready for the one I've been waiting for. Not that I love the dates because I got to think about how I'm going to get some of these dates into my software. But let's get started for our second quick start. Okay, so welcome back. I know you guys have these ancestors in the CC, CCC camps. I always was confused. Uh, is it two C's? Is it three C's? Well, we have a special guest here today that I met at the Institute of Genealogy and Historical Research. She comes from one of those great genealogy states. And I want you guys to welcome our special guest, Pat Stam. Hello, Pat. Can you do Hi the headroom? Hi, Carol. Thing? How are y'all doing tonight? Can you do the headroom thingy for me again? All right. That Thank better. you so much. Pat, we are so excited to have you here today. But before we get started, because I'm ready to get know about these CCC camps, before we get started, we love to know our special guest 
um, genealogy story. How did you get started? And it's the one minute genealogy story, Pat. How did you get started and how did you know that you were hooked? Well, it started off very, very simply. Um, I was going back to clean out my mom and dad's house. Um, they had been in that house for 45 years. And so I went through everything. My mom was a depression baby and she kind of kept everything. And I learned very, very quickly not to throw anything away until I went through it. So I found this old shoe box. And when I found the shoe box, it had a bunch of newspaper clippings for my father's side of the family. Uh, growing up, I used to go to visit all of my um, cousins, my father's cousins. And those were in the days when you didn't listen to TV. You sat in the corner and kept your mouth shut and on a stool and listened to the stories. So I started remembering some of the stories and putting it together. Anyway, bottom line is, as I started to put this together, my husband had no interest. So I reached out to St. Louis Genealogical Society, and they were very, very open to me coming in and talking and listening and learning and everything else. And, and one of the people that was my mentor, uh, many of you may know her, is Ann Fleming. Oh, and Anne. Oh, my gosh. She was your mentor. Oh, my yes. goodness. You were lucky. Oh, my gosh. No wonder you're so great. No wonder you're so great. So she ended up um, uh, running a trip to Salt Lake City. And I was on my first trip to Salt Lake City with her and Kay uh, Fraley. Oh, me and Jim are Kay fans. We need some Kay t-shirts. Kay and Ann, the, the cousins. And then Pam Sayre. Oh, Pam. <laughs> so anyway, that's my genealogy minute. All right. All right. You had a great genealogy minute. You had some. I remember when Ann um, retired from IGHR. She was probably my first retirement. And I was like, wait a minute. What does that mean? She's not coming back in the summers. I'm not going to be walking around campus with Ann. But yeah. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic ladies and Kay, of course, as well. All right. Let's get going with these CCC camps. Okay. All right. Now, Let's re oh, hold on, Pat. Well, go ahead. You get started <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, I'll pitch in. That's a little <laughs> wild, guy. She seems like she's a mild-mannered lady. She's a little wild. I've learned that within the past <laughs> couple of weeks. So today we're going to talk and do the quick start. Jobs for Depression Era Youth, CCC Camps. And so, um, Pat, um Let's get to step one. Oh, you were going to say something. Did you want to say something? Oh, no. We go to step just one? go ahead. Do okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So step one is who may have been in a CCC camp? So tell us why, what, what person would have, might have, which ancestor should we be pulling out for this? Well, let me back up the boat a little bit. Okay. Because Franklin Roosevelt was a very, very smart man. We were coming out of the Depression, and that was in 1933 when he was elected. And he got together the um, four major operations departments within the government. Uh, war, which has been renamed to defense, agriculture, interior, and labor. And within a, a hundred days of his coming into um, office, he set up the CCC. Now, this was for unemployed young men, okay? And that's the kicker. Remember that they had to be unemployed. They didn't have a job, okay? Okay. Um, after that, they started doing projects across the United States, and the men were sent to these camps that were usually on railroad lines, okay, but not necessarily the, the, the people that went to the camps were not necessarily in their own home state. Oh, okay. okay. That's so, that's another important thing to remember. So let's step back, Pat, because you're going ahead. 
you we okay. got a lot of information here. So first we want to look for, is it an age group or it could be based basically anybody? Yeah, well, it an was employee. usually, it was usually um, kids between the ages of 17 to 25. Okay. They had to be unmarried, unemployed, no. of course, and they could sign up for uh, a six month tour. Now they could re up up to two years. Okay. Um, then after the single men were in for a while, they started including veterans. Okay. Uh, and they had no age restriction. They could be married or not. And they also had up to two years maximum tour. There were women camps, but that came much, much, much later. So I'm just talking about the men here. All right. Okay. okay. So that, so um, it could have basically been a lot of categories. Just look for the men who would have been living during what, what time you said this was Roosevelt's time period. Right. Uh, the first camp was in 1933. Okay. So 1930s during the depression era. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, let's look at step two. Now that you have the people, um, where did they live from 1933 to 1941? And so you said they could have, it might not have. They could have lived anywhere. Okay. But what ended up happening is when they established the camp, the Department of War set up the nine um, offices or nine divisions across the United States. And I think you have a map to show I that. I do. I do. My fingers are doing their thing again. That's all right. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> and then like if you said your grandfather, your grandfather was in the CCC. Yes. And he was from New Jersey. Yes. And New Jersey was in um, the area that was for area number two that covered Delaware, New Jersey, and New York. Okay. And then uh, if any of you people are, are from lower area, like Maryland, Pennsylvania, or Virginia, that's going to be in area three. And then, okay. of course, as you can see, as you go across, Illinois is, is uh, area six. And then area seven covers a lot of states, Big. Yeah. Illinois or, or Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North and South Dakota. So it kept on going across, but it was the war department that set this, this cha uh, chapter up. Okay. Okay. So um, knowing where they lived would help us to know what their um, area, which one of the nine areas they were in. So then step three is to learn more about the history um, of the CCC camp. So you said you have a nice slide that says what the program provided. Let's look at that. Okay. Now the program was interesting. Because what they did was they paid the men $30 uh, a month. Okay. Can you imagine being paid $30 a month <laughs> in today's life? But that's neither here nor there. And they were required to send $25 back to their family. And they had a designated payee that they would send it back to. It could be a mother, a father, a grandparent, somebody in the family. Um, I love this picture. This is off of um, the Library of Congress of one gentleman enjoying his meal. But that was one of the things they didn't have to worry about. They didn't have to worry about meals or housing or uniforms or medical care. They got all of that for free. Nice. And I don't know for a fact, but I would imagine that old saying that we've always heard about uh, three meals in a cot. Oh, okay. might have come one. from the CCC because that's exactly what ended up happening. They got three hot meals and a cot each and every day. OK. And you had said that there was a great website that they could go to to learn about CCC camps. Oh, yeah. That's the legacy um, 
legacy website and there's several things on the legacy website i have it highlighted up at the very very tip top with the historic stuff but the the uh that will give a link to the various camps from across the united states but they have a newsletter and they have articles and all sorts of things off of this website so take note of this one really good website Okay. And so um, that's one of the places that you can learn about it. You also had said that, you know, this is the National Archives. And so you can probably learn about it there. Um, the National Archives has a page that is just devoted to the CCC, okay, for information. Mm -hmm. And then they also have a preliminary inventory that gives a listing of all of the records that are in the National Archives because I will be honest with you, they're all over the place. Okay. And I um, think that's your next step. Step yes. four is to look for evidence on all levels. So can you explain when you say all over the place, I get scared. And so is there like, what do you mean by levels, Pat? Well, there's um, the official um, personnel file of the individual is here at the uh, Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, okay? However, um, they never made a master listing of the participants. So we don't know, many of the times it's your family story that's going to give you a suggestion that these people were in the CCC. You can't go to, you know, like, family search or whatever, and just pull up a master list. They just don't have it. So the official personnel file is here in St. Louis. There's other reports as we go down through it that um, you're going to be able to see in uh, either College Park or in uh, Washington, D.C. Or, or wherever. So, I mean, you just kind of have to to be tenacious, okay, when you're working with the CCC. Well, we're used to that, Pat. We are so used to being tenacious. So let's take a look at some of these wonderful records that you have. Okay. Uh, give me one second to get that up. I don't know why my fingers are not working today. Oh, it did it again. Hold on. That's all right. <laughs> Um, the, so tell the, us about some of the um, different types of records that. Okay, um, like the uh, official personnel file. That's that's an interesting thing because it it ended up talking about um, the grade level that the uh, the people went to. It talked about their family. It talked about who was going to get the money uh, for uh, their particular um, event if that, you know, um, they're $25 as such. Then it would give a listing. There were uh, additional pages that would talk about any kind of training that they went to and everything else. I like this one. This is from um, a New Jersey deal, uh, a gentleman. And it's, it's kind of hard to see, but right under his name, and the address over on the side are a listing of three camps that he was stationed at. He started in New York and then moved across the country and ended up in California. Now you wouldn't think of a Jersey boy ending up in <laughs> California, but those were the assignments that he got as they went across the country. So would the, so these um, we had you had told us about the different areas, and so would the his records would be in the area based on where he lived, not in all of these different places where he camps. No, at this point it's under his name. Okay. Okay. Um, as oh, far as as, as far as the personnel file went. This is great information. Their parents are here, nationalities, citizenship, occupation, yeah. education. 
And some of the, and the CCC was not meant to get people involved to compete with businesses that were already trying to get people involved. These were um, what we would call um, inner, um, okay, you have your fingers having problems and my tongue is the one that's the problem. <laughs> okay, Infra infrastructure, yes, like project. building access to roads or right. forest management or soil conservation or flood control. Right. Okay. These were more along the lines of uh, menial labor. Uh -huh. Okay. But I don't know if, if you go to a park in your state now, a state mm -hmm. park, you may see some cabins that the CCC built for people um, way back when. Okay. 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 So here it has their previous occupational experience. I'm just loving, and there's all these dates on here. I'm just getting all confused. I want to put all these dates down. I love this. Great stuff. What's this mm -hmm. one here? Now, what ended up happening, sorry to say, is sometimes accidents happened. And when those happened, okay, of course they had reports. The reports are out at College Park, Maryland. Okay, these accident reports, but they have so much detail. They would give uh, witness testimony that would show how the accident occurred. This is uh, beautiful. in this instance, you have a drawing, and this gentleman, uh, he was from Kentucky, and he was killed in in oh one of these my. accidents. But the log came down and hit him on the head, and oh they made my. a drawing to show oh, you yes. what ended up happening. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, the other thing that's out at College Park, Maryland, is the camp reports. And the camp reports had a wealth of information. It gave a listing of the um, training classes that they had and whether the people attended or didn't attend. It had the expenditures for all of the uh, food and and um, things that they needed to build these roads. It had the menus that they would end up having. And you have this in a larger slide on the next Yeah, slide. I'm checking out this menu. It's making me hungry. Yeah. So you could see one day it would be roast beef. The next day it would be um, they would have... Um, different types of things and and it was full meals so i mean it wasn't just little piddling things i mean I it was a full it. meal yes. and this was the one that would went to the one of the camps down in florida okay wilted lettuce lima beans hot biscuits they were eating they were, that's why they had to send all that money back to their families <laughs> yeah and they had fruit drinks and and things of this nature very nice fried eggplant bread pudding they were they they uh they gave them some good uh give them some food so that's i guess that's the agriculture connection let's see what else do we have in here oh here's another one these are really interesting where did you get these from oh the newspapers they had um there's two type of newspapers there the happy days newspaper is the one that was trying to entice people to come to the CCC, okay? And that one is on Ancestry.com, okay, uh, for the issues between 1933 and 1940. Okay. So you can look at those. Ancestry. Yes. Happy days, okay? Okay. Now, other camps produce their own maybe one or two page, three page, four page event uh, newspaper. And, you know, these are the old um, mimeograph machines. Okay. I love those. And uh, one of the things, there's a book published that puts together the Civilian Conservation Corps camp newspapers but there's also a bunch of these that are in the new 
digital books section of familysearch.org. Oh. Now, is it going to be everyone? No. But is it going to give you a feel for it? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it's so much fun. As so many levels. You, I get the levels. So you had the co College Park. You have St. Louis, of course. And now you have these newsletters at Ancestry and Family Search. And then what are these that you have here? Okay. These are some of the books that I found on the um, shelf at one of the line, or maybe it's a combination of libraries. But I ended up looking and, and just putting in CCC in a library catalog, and you may come up with all sorts of things on there. Now, the great thing about it is besides the members telling stories, okay, about those particular camps or whatever, you may have a listing in that book of the people who participated from on that camp. Okay. 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 So, I mean, there's many, many different areas that you have to search. So I love that. So you're saying card um, catalogs of different institutions, local institutions to see what you find. I guess something like a WorldCat and archives grid might oh, be good. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, and start with your, I'm sorry, start with your local genealogy library. They may have something. Ooh, yeah. Or a family search. You never know. You try know, everything. Know. Everything. Also, don't yes. overlook, and, and, and this is a plug for Allen County Public Library. Oh. Don't overlook Percy. Okay. <sighs> That's the periodic source index. These are articles from, from geological newsletters from across the country. Many of them uh, are in there. So go. Go look under Percy too. And right now, or not right now, it started to be free and it's on the front cover of the genealogy department right there at Allen County. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Because I think before I got to Percy through Heritage Quest and right. yeah, so now it's free. Okay. Now it's, it's Allen County has their own cons um, control of their own thing now and it's right there on the front cover. Okay, fantastic. And Pat, this is, you talked about St. Louis. And I did, so, but before I do that, can I throw in two more libraries oh, sure, that sure. you need to get into? I'm sure. sorry. For the photographs, oh. you can go into the photographs by way of the Library of Congress photograph section. Online. And you can go into it by way of the uh, National Archives uh, still branch photograph section. So they don't give the names of the individuals, but they do give pictures of the camps. Yeah. You may see how the camps were laid out. You may see a listing of, of the uh, people going in for meals or all sorts of good stuff. And that's what we have. We have this mass, this massive picture, like it's huge and it's a whole bunch of men. So we spend a lot of time pointing at people trying to figure out, um, is there is this their other uh, uh, person? Is this Uncle Laja? Is this Uncle Lewis? Is this you know? So it's a lot of fun. It's a shame that they didn't have like a, a master list. Um, so are we ready for Saint Louis? Yeah. Now I'm okay. sorry. That, no, no, don't be sorry. <laughs> I I love all this information because it seems like a lot, but it's it's useful to help us to get to where we need to be. All right, so let's take a look. So, okay, St. Louis, um, you, what do you need in order to order from St. Louis? Because you said there's no master list. So how do they know? You need to, you, um, you so need. So Pat, I'm going to tell you one thing. Actually on Papa's uh, draft card, it said CCC camp number something or other. And if you have that, include that in your information. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it's when I talk to my students many times and I tell them to go to a library, I said, don't go to the library and say, give me all of John Walls's information <laughs> that you have. <laughs> you need some clues to suggest to them that there is a file at the National Archives. 
Okay. The Personnel Records Center is one of the busiest facilities in the country for the National Archives. So you don't want them to, um, you you want to give them some leads that may give them something that's going to pan out. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And please so, don't tell them that I told you to contact them. <laughs> <laughs> so give them as much information as possible in this form. And, and right. there's a cost associated with it, I'm sure. And a lot of the times what ended up happening with the men, okay, because of the time frame of the CCC, okay, ending in 1942, many of the men went directly from the CCC into the military. So you may have an indication on some of their military oh. papers that they were in the CCC. Okay, okay. Here you have something else that is like a listing. This is, this is off of the legacy page. And this is a listing of the camps for Ohio. All right. And it went on for um, longer than, than what I have here, but it gave the type of projects that they were doing. And it, mm -hmm. um, all of these code numbers are in the front of this. And then it had the date that the camp came into existence, mm -hmm. the railroad they were near, the post office they were near and the location that the camp was in in the state of ohio can you talk to us about the railroad again you said something about the camps being near railroads yeah that's one of the things that that a lot of people um railroads at that time were in their golden age and so you had many, many more railroad lines across the United States than what you may have today. But the, the, the key on this is to get um, supplies into these camps, they needed some way of getting them there. And the railroads were the ones to take them in and bring them out. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, a lot of sense. So let's look at how, where we are with the steps because we are our time. I'm going to, I have to pay attention because I get too into this and the time runs out. So let's see. We did look for evidence on all levels, College Park, St. Louis, Library of Congress for pictures, National Archives for pictures, fa uh, Family Search and Ancestry for those newspapers. And then of course, the catalogs, WorldCat and Archives Grid. So I, I'm starting and also, and, and I'll throw out, don't overlook Google Books and Internet <sighs> Archives. Yes, yes, yes. Probably, yeah, Internet Archives is my jam. Definitely have to check it there. And then step five, uh, we talked about this, is to send a request to St. Louis. But you want to check all of these places first so that you can give them the information so that they can get to it quickly instead of saying, I got to go to lunch. I'm closing out this case because they didn't give me enough work. So. <laughs> Pat, let's run through the steps for the CCC camps, jobs for depression era youth and more CCC camps. So step one is look at your tree. Who may have been in the camp? Step two, where did they live from 1933 to 1941? That'll tell you their area. Step three, learn about the history of the CCC. Step four, is to look for evidence on all levels. I've said it a thousand times. I can't say it again. Step five is to send a request to St. Louis using all of the wonderful information that you received. Pat, thank you so much. There was one question here that I did not answer from Barbara. She had asked about gaps when Jim and Michael were talking about gaps. She asked, what do they mean by three or four year gaps? So gaps and dates that appear on the record. Are the dates close to each other? Or if there's a big, huge gap of three years, 50 years, then the question is why, Barbara? Why did that happen? So that's what we kind of meant by gaps. I didn't want to leave your question out. Everyone's so excited about the CCC camps, Pat. I think they've left us. They're going on to family search and they're trying to library of congress to find these pictures thank you so much let's bring out michael and jim we have actually 20 <laughs> oh, all right guys 
Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye. Pat, don't leave. Bye.